Hi there. Hope you have a fantastic day today. This lesson, I'm going to teach you projectile motion. When a particle is projected upward into the air, it will go up at a certain height and will fall down to the ground. This is due to the gravity of the earth and it passes a parabola. Let's say we have a ball is projected from the ground into the air with an initial velocity of V. And at an angle, theta. So we have a horizontal component. This is X. And then the vertical component is Y. So we will have an initial horizontal velocity and initial vertical velocity as well. So we have it here. So this is horizontal initial velocity so x dot and we have vertical initial velocity y dot so to work out the velocity for vertical and horizontal for horizontal we have adjacent and hypotenuse so which is cos so we write cos of theta equal adjacent which is x dot over hypotenuse which is v now if i times v both side so if we turn this by v and i times this by v so this cancel out so therefore the initial horizontal velocity is equal to v cos theta similarly for vertical velocity so we have opposite hypotenuse so therefore is psi so sine of theta is equal to opposite which is y dot which is vertical initial velocity over v and if i times v both side so this cancel out so therefore y dot is equal to v psi theta so therefore we can write initial velocity in component form so that is v0 which is initial velocity so the horizontal component is v cos theta so which is which is right v cos theta i and then we plus the vertical component that is v psi theta which is j so therefore the initial velocity of the particle is v cos theta i plus v psi theta j and don't forget this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component so apart from vertical and horizontal velocity we also have acceleration as well so vertical acceleration so y double dot is acceleration equal negative g the reason is because the ball is project upward so therefore the acceleration is work against the ball so which is negative g so g is equal 9.8 or 10 depend what textbook you're working with okay and we also have horizontal acceleration as well but in this case the horizontal acceleration is zero so which is ignore all the air resistance so which is equal zero therefore we can write acceleration in component form so which is at is equal to the horizontal component which is zero i plus negative gj that is the vertical component so that will give me negative g j to find the velocity all we need to do is we just need to integrate the acceleration so v of t is equal to integrate negative g j dt so that would give me negative g t j and don't forget we add a c a constant so to find the initial velocity that means when t equals zero so we find v of zero so v of zero equal negative g times t equals zero and just write j at c 
So this means that this becomes zero. So therefore, V of zero is equal to C. Now from initial condition, we know that V of zero is equal to this one here, which is V cos of theta i plus V sine of theta j. So therefore, C is equal to, I just write this down. So therefore, C is equal to V cos of theta i plus V sine of theta j. So therefore, I just write this down, V of t is equal to negative g t j plus c. But c is equal to V cos of theta i plus V sine of theta j. So let me rewrite the velocity. So put j all together. So that is equal to I just write the horizontal component first. V cos of theta i plus, okay, I just write this down first, so which is V psi theta plus minus gt and bracket, and this is j component. So there you go. This is the velocity. And don't forget, this is the horizontal component, and this is the vertical component. Now, to find the displacement or position of the particle if you like, so I just integrate the, the velocity. Let me write R of T, so that is the uh, displacement or position of the, of the ball if you like, so which is equal to integrate VT, of course DT. So that is equal to integrate um, Vt is V cos theta i plus V psi of theta minus gt j. Of course, we bracket this and dt. And now we just integrate this. Now this one here is V cos theta is just a constant. So we integrate dt is give me t, right? So that will give me V cos theta T i and plus again, this is just a constant. So we integrate that dt. So give me T times that. So let me write this down. So which is V psi theta T minus. So we integrate T, give me T square and then divide by two. So that will give me a half of g t square and this is j and don't forget to add c c is a constant so now we need to find the constant in another word we need to find c so which is r of zero when t equals zero so to find that so when i equals zero so that means t equals zero so when t equals zero so this part is equal to zero and this part equals zero because t times, uh, because zero times anything is give me zero. And this is become zero. So therefore, r of zero is equal to c. So r of zero is equal to c. Because the ball is projected from the ground. So therefore, c is equal to zero. Because r of zero is equal to zero. So therefore, c is equal to zero. So now, R of T, which is the displacement, is equal to V cos theta T I. We add V psi theta T minus a half of G T squared. J. So there you go. This is the displacement. Now that is a lot of information. So let me summarize and put all this information into a table for you. So now we know that the horizontal acceleration 
is zero, right? So we write zero i. And then the vertical acceleration is negative g. So negative g j. And then for the, the horizontal velocity is v cos theta i. And so for vertical velocity, we have v psi theta minus gt. And of course, is j. And for the uh, displacement for horizontal component, so we have v cos theta t i. And for vertical component, we have v psi theta t minus a half of g t square j. To find the maximum height of the projectile, so what it means is the particle it fly all the way up and what happened at some certain height the vertical height it stopped going up so in another word the vertical component okay the vertical component of the velocity is zero so in another word this component is equal to zero so remember that for me so therefore so let me write this down maximum height of the so that means v psi theta minus gt is equal to zero so the velocity of the vertical component equals zero because it's gone up and it stopped okay so which is equal to zero now which is so for t so i just move this on its side so v psi theta is equal to gt if I divide everything by g, I divide this by g, that cancel out. So therefore, t is equal to v psi of theta over g. So at this time, the particle is maximum height. Okay. So to find the maximum height, so we just substitute t into the vertical component the y okay component if you like so that is here okay so this is the the vertical component displacement so y is equal to v psi of theta t minus a half g t square now i just substitute t into y so that would give me equal to v psi of theta times so v psi theta over g minus a half g and then now v psi theta over g all square so now i just need to work this out so that will give me so v square psi square theta over g minus so a half of g times v square psi square theta over g square so now we just need to cancel some of them out so this g square and g cross it out give me g so let me move this up so this will equal to v square psi square theta over g minus v square psi square g over 2g so i just time this by 2 this become 2 so now the common denominator the same so i just simplified it so that will give me so 2 minus that so give me v square psi square theta over 2g so therefore y is equal to this so therefore this is the maximum height of the projectile now to work out the time of fly of the projectile so i just write this here time of fly times of flight means when the particle actually drop on the ground so in another word the y components is equal to zero for displacement okay so the displacement is here. 
So this means that this component here, the y component is equal to zero. Okay, the vertical component. So which is so this is equal to zero, and now which is so for it. So we take the t out, so that will give me v sine of theta minus minus a half gt is equal to zero. So therefore, t is equal to zero, or v sine of theta minus a half gt is equal to zero. So I move this on this side. So that is v sine of theta equal a half gt. So I just turn by two. So this is two that cancel out, and I divide by this by g. That cancel out. So therefore, so t must equal to two v sine of theta over g. So therefore, two v sine theta over g is the terms of flight for the particle. We can also find the range for the particle, horizontal distance, if you like. So in another word, for horizontal distance, we already know the terms of flight already, which is t equal two v psi the theta over g. So we need to just substitute in the horizontal component for displacement. We just need to substitute into here. That's all it is to substitute it in. So let me just write this down. So I just write the range of the particle. I just write the range we do. So which is we know that range. So we know the horizontal component for displacement is v cos theta t, and we just substitute this t in here because this is the t that the particle flying time. Okay, so we just substitute in there. So which is v cos theta times two v psi theta over g. So that will give me. So v times v is v square, and the two, of course, we need to write in front, and then cos times psi, and is psi cos psi theta cos theta or cos theta psi theta doesn't really matter. So over g, and do not forget. So we know that is two psi theta cos theta is equal to psi of two theta. So therefore. So therefore, this is equal to. So this is two psi theta cos theta. So in another word, this is equal to v square psi of two theta over g. So this is the the range of the particle. Thank you so much for watching. Please watch out for the next video. I will teach you how to use all these formula to solve some of the problems. With the projectile motion. Bye.